thanks for spending some time with me here as I work away on this uh, really nice radio with a lot of really terrible capacitors in it. The last video I replaced two. Maybe you can see some yellow capacitors up in here. And it had a very positive result on the radio. The audio section has now come to life, uh, at least in terms of the output of the audio section. The uh, input, well, still getting nothing from the radio as far as I can tell. So lots more capacitors to do though. So I'm going to do these two. These two uh, appear to be Oh, this, let's see, this one's actually connected back to this tube. This one's right on the detector tube. Well, maybe a good thing to do, we'll do this one and then we'll try the radio again. I can clearly see the size of it already too, 0.01, which is good. So, radio's switched off, it's safe. Let's nip it here. tricky. Everything's all dark. It's actually going to this terminal over here. Okay. Point oh one. You can see all the what's left of the insulation on this one wire that I uh, have been flexing. I can cut this away. This yeah, I might as well do this one too. Looks like I'm going to do four of them here. One, two, three, four of them. Then test the radio after that. So one of the things I've been trying to teach myself is how to, uh, or at least maybe not teach myself, but discover is the correlation between what these capacitors look like and how well they test. No surprise, so far the correlation has been really good. I can look in an old radio, maybe not one quite this old, and see a whole pile of these wax paper capacitors, but they look like new. Wax is covering them completely still. In those cases, those wax capacitors test good. I've done a radio where I did all of them and there wasn't one that was actually bad. So what that tells me again is don't jump into changing capacitors right away. I mean, this radio is definitely, and I knew from the moment I looked at it, that's where this was going. But if you've got something out of the 1960s, um, and you think you're going to do yourself a favor by changing out all the capacitors, you could really be doing the opposite. <laughs> Solder irons. Switched off again. Maybe I'm going to have to change the uh, automatic off setting there.
ね。Straight to the terminal here, rather than on the lead wire. It's our time. It's about 9:30 in the morning now. terminal, I'll go on the wire right near the terminal. the excess here. That's number three. Good show. Uh, I'll leave this one for now. Go after this guy here. Got these very nice leads. <laughs> Somewhere on here it says it's size. Point zero zero two five. Zero zero two five, eh? That's just a wee bit of a That's a zero zero three instead of a zero zero two five. Pretty sure that's the uh, the audio signal uh, fed through the volume control at that point. Actually, it's coming from the volume control, from the volume control way back to here. The tube order wrong or something? Off. Trim it back. I'm pretty sure that's the uh, detector tube there, so. Not sure why I would spot an audio line going to the tube before it.
use this uh, insulation here. Let me put a little more light on in my shop. Terrible lighting here. There we go, that's number four. one next. A little excited there. Oh, I said I was going to do this one next. Zero zero five. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Zero zero five. short on one side so there's no length of exposed bare wire long on the other
Mm. I have a feeling my solder fell to the floor and rolled somewhere. Bring out the big gun here. Okay, that's done. I'll do this one right on the same terminal. at the voltmeter, uh, my monitoring voltmeter for the line voltage is flying up and down. Out there it's at 118, 119 right now and it flies down to 114. That's 5 volts. I wonder what's going on. Now the uh, utility power company here, or really a power company, uh, I just went through my backyard trimming trees. I have a backyard feed system here. So the power companies do not like. I regret them because they're such a hassle. It's one thing to put poles and wires into a new subdivision where, you know, everything's open and, it, and then you come back. 40 years later and everything was grown over with big trees and yeah, even though you have a right of way you're not going to police it for 40 years so when you finally come back to do work it's a major hassle but I like it as a residence because it really does put all the wires out of sight and you don't have a pile of green transformer and connection boxes that are going up and down your road 
almost looks worse to me than having poles out front of your house with wires on them. I mean, you still have poles out there for street lights. There's one of the difficulties with backyard feed is the street lights are out on the street. And somehow the power company's got to get power to those street lights, so they tend to run underwater, underwater, yeah, underground wires from the uh, backyard poles maybe where a transformer is underground between the houses and up into the front front of the house like any street light is okay so voltage you gotta, you gotta see this look at, look at this meter Here, just watch that for a moment moment of silence. Actually, I'm drinking some coffee there, so... Okay, well, I'll just I'll leave you staring at that meter for a minute or two. Um, it's not swinging quite, quite as wildly. See, look at that. See, that doesn't say to me uh, that's loads in people's homes. Wow. The way these meters normally move, because I used to work for the power company in that, is uh, you turn on a load, you turn off a load, the change persists. You don't turn on a load and turn it off right away. You don't get jerky flying movements on these meters. They should go up to a spot and sit there, and then down to a spot and sit there. And they flick, flitter around a bit. It makes me think there's a, some kind of contact problem. Uh, we did have a big snowfall. Yeah, it's not so exciting, is it? Let's go back to the real exciting stuff. Uh, we did have a pretty big snowfall. Snow on the lines? I don't know. Frozen water, I don't think it's very conductive. Let me just shift the focus here a little bit. Okay. So once I get this soldered in, we'll try the radio again, I think, because, well, maybe we should do this one too while we're in here. Why not? We're going to have to do it sooner or later. Something here had to be soldered. What was it? Was it this? If you just heard some weird crackling sound in the background, it's actually my cat's toenails striking the uh, floor here as it walks around. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that or not. That's in. That's in. This is coming from uh, one of the IF coils over here. Let's leave that one as it is. Well, that's kind of introducing a signal. See, there's another one of these guys down here. He might be okay, though. Let's leave it like that, and we'll see where we got. Because what have I done? I've done what I think is a detector tube. And what would this be? You know what? Maybe this is a detector tube. This is a push-pull radio, so it needs an inverter. So, so may maybe this is doing the inversion to provide the signals for the push-pull. Push-pull deal. So in that case, I've gone. If this is the detector, then I've gone back here. What what tube is this for crying? Let's stop the guessing. Pull it out. Take a look. Take a look at it. Six SQ seven. No, this is not the detector tube. You know what? I think that's maybe. Let's see how that terminal really. Not particularly strong in there, is it? Hmm. Um, so maybe it's detector amplifier output. Maybe that's what they've done. I'm very sure this is the detector tube. And that would kind of explain why things appear to be going from here to here, and then from here over to here to here to here. Get that? 
Ready for a test. Yeah, let's test it. I'm, I'm just... Okay. A few tools out of the way. We're all set. two light bulbs up above, but I don't expect anything funny. We still have this, still have this arrangement here. Seems just fine. It's just fine like that. Okay, here we go. The lights have come on, but each time I've done the capacitor work, the lights have come on lower and slower. As if we're cutting back load uh, on the radio. Volumes down. Good. Let's take a look at the wattage here. 50 watts now. Big pop came out of the speaker. Let's turn it up. Hear the hum. Ooh. Things might get suddenly very loud. float this control if you do and more hum in it that's good hey that shows the amplifiers working hey hey not <laughs> diggity dog now we're still on band a no antennas the special antenna wire leads here are not connected Short, shorted out connection there. That's not so good. Just trying to hold these wires out in space. Here we go. Let's try it again. Sounds coming through. Of course, I really think we need to do the rest of these to, to get this guy really going, but I think it's coming along. In fact, if I take my noise inserter and stick it right here. Ho, 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 ho. That's what I say. I say, ho, ho, ho. She's coming back to life here. One step at a time. Very good. Very good. Now we know the audio section is actually working okay. Great. Now, uh, one, one thing I didn't uh, check, uh, and I should have. Um, when I changed the two capacitors in the audio section here, you can see the one there and the others. The others a little out of view. I didn't check the uh, bias. The bias was showing up at uh, 35 volts, uh, which had me quite concerned. Let's see what it is now. You can hear the audio section uh, producing that noise. Let's see. So I'm going to get it right off of here. See, 11 volts. 11, 11 volts. That was 35 volts. 11 volts is right in the proper range considering the low B plus right now. So, uh, yeah, I think these tubes were in cutoff before from uh, leaky, probably coupling capacitors, and the two that I did there, probably blocking the B plus from reaching the grid of those output tubes, and uh, it wasn't working. Those tubes were... Well, I better back up on that. Did I? I never did read the grid voltage, did I? I don't know. I can't remember now. But anyway, it's quite quite clear that changing those capacitors has changed the output uh, completely. And the radio is currently consuming 50 watts. Let's give it the full treatment now. Give it full voltage here. We'll see what, what the power consumption is here. It's supposed to be around 80. 
hard to see, hard for you to see. It says 76 now. More thumbs up. So I, I'm willing to bet the uh, the high power drain on this radio was nothing more than problems in the output tubes. Those output tubes are going to take a beating too. They weren't going to last too much longer. Great, fantastic. That's great. What's next on the hit parade? Next on the hit parade is just to do a couple more of these up in here. These are in the IF section of the radio. Pretty large ones here. And uh, if I can get at a few up in here uh, without doing backflips, I'll go after them. We still have this split one in here, but as you know, the very front end of the radio does not seem to be working yet. And I also have to get these wires connected properly to fully test the radio. So, hey, good stuff.